It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding! Oh, hey there. Uh, you caught me in the middle of playing my favorite entomology-based video game, Beetle Blaster. Uh, I'll be with you in just a second. I just need to fend off these ants. Oh, they're kind of tough. They're ganging up on me. I think they got them. Ah, oh, garden ants are vicious. Okay, I just need to recharge. Aim my butt. There we go. There we go. Take that. There we go. Ah, finally. Uh, I'm playing a bombardier beetle. It's an amazing animal that actually has uh, an impressive defense. Oh, sorry. Jumping spider. Let me just one more. There we go. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think I've changed his mind. Oh, and of course, it's the boss frog. I never beat this guy. Okay, so I guess this is a good time to pause the video game and talk a little entomology. Uh, as you may have guessed, I'm pulling your leg. This video game doesn't actually exist. It's just a result of me fooling around with some of my insect models in the Unreal Development Kit. Also, bombardier beetles in the real world, they don't shoot flames out of their butts. Might sound a little disappointing, but what actually happens is even more amazing. So this animation is going to take a closer look at the bombardier beetle's amazing chemical defense mechanism. Let's start with a talk about what a bombardier beetle actually is. So a bombardier is a type of ground beetle. It sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Well, actually the taxonomy of beetles is anything but simple. Beetles fall under the order Coleoptera, and there are close to 400,000 species of beetles under Coleoptera. 40% of all known insects are beetles. Coleoptera is divided into dozens of families and subfamilies. Ground beetles are grouped under the subfamily Carabidae, of which there are 40,000 species, and these are organized into 34 subfamilies. So for bombardiers, there are about 500 species, and these are spread across four of the subfamilies, Brachini, Pausini, Auzinini, and Metrini. Surprisingly, the famous bombardier defense mechanism is similar enough among the 500 species in these four different families that it's safe enough to make generalizations about this aspect of the bombardier's physiology. It also suggests that the mechanism probably appeared in a common ancestor of these 500 or so species. The common name bombardier is applied to all these beetle species that use this explosive chemical defense mechanism. And the organs that are responsible for this defense are found in the beetle's abdomen. The mechanism itself is actually fairly simple. It consists of some finger-like lobes that are lined with chemical producing cells. Some ducts that move the chemicals from the lobes into these large reservoirs a reaction chamber that is separated from the reservoirs by some valves, and finally the exit point, which the beetle can rotate like a small turret. The turret gives the beetle a surprising amount of accuracy when it fires at an attacker. If we could take a look at what's going on within the reservoir at the molecular scale, we would find an aqueous solution that contains water, good old H2O. And it had the water molecule shaded in this light blue color. We also have hydrogen peroxide, which I've shaded in a deep red, and methyl hydroquinone, which I've shaded in yellow. So these ingredients are secreted by the finger-like lobes that are above the reservoir, and then transferred to the reservoir via ducts. In the reservoir, I've shown these molecules all kind of bouncing around against each other, but they're not really reacting. They're just kept there in storage until the beetle needs them to fend off an attack. So concentrated hydrogen peroxide is in fact a very volatile substance. It's even been used as a rocket propeller. But in an aqueous solution, it's quite stable, and stable enough that it can be safely stored inside the beetle's abdomen. It may seem crazy that a little beetle can produce something like hydrogen peroxide, but it's actually not that unusual. Hydrogen peroxide is found in many organisms and has a wide variety of uses. For example, living cells often use hydrogen peroxide as a signaling mechanism. So now, how does the beetle turn this stuff into boiling hot stinko juice? The secret is enzymes. Yes, enzymes are extremely exciting. When the beetle senses an attack, like for example when it feels an ant pinching its leg, the reservoir chambers are squeezed by muscles and the mixture is pushed through valves that separate the reservoir from the reaction chambers. As the solution floods the reaction chamber, it comes into contact with two different enzymes. So one enzyme is catalase. In the beetle, catalase promotes the liberation of oxygen from the hydrogen peroxide. 
And I'm illustrating this by showing the catalase kind of spewing out these little red dots, which represent the freed oxygen molecules. This process creates the energy needed to create the explosive release of the hot fluid from the reaction chamber. The second enzyme is peroxidase, and its role is to catalyze the oxidation of the hydroquinones. Or to put it another simpler way, it converts the hydroquinones into benzoquinones. So benzoquinones, which I've shown in blue, smell bad, taste bad, they stain your skin, and they generally do a good job of discouraging you from messing with the beetle. So let's say an ant bites the beetle on the leg, like I've shown in this animation. The beetle then aims its abdomen towards the bite point, squeezes the muscles around the reservoir to push the solution into the reaction chamber. The explosive reaction creates an audible pop, which startles the attacker. A small bluish cloud of hot vapor appears, and it's very hot. The liquid coming out of the beetle is at a boiling 100 degrees Celsius. There's no flame, though. The ant attacker is then covered in benzoquinones, which is an irritant that also smells bad and tastes bad. So the ant might not detect the bad taste, but frogs certainly do. And many times a frog will spit out the beetle and probably avoid eating any other bombardiers in the future after learning this lesson. The spray is released in a series of super fast pulses, which researchers suggest may help to protect the end of the beetle's abdomen from heating up too much. The pulse happens at a rate between 500 to 1000 times a second. So you are probably saying, yeah, okay, but everything I've seen so far has been done in CG, and you can make computer graphics models do anything you want them to. So how do I know any of this is for real? Well, that is an excellent question. To answer that, I will direct you to a very cool video made by Eric Arndt at MIT. It's available for free on YouTube, and it's based on a research paper authored by Arndt, Moore, Lee, and Orenz. This video shows the bombardier's mechanism in action inside a real beetle. So I was inspired to create this animation based on the book For Love of Insects by the great chemical ecologist and entomologist Thomas Eisner. If you want to get a glimpse into the wide variety of amazing chemistry of insect and arachnid defense mechanisms, I can't think of a better place to start than with this book. So that concludes the second episode of Entomology Animated. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you all next time for another episode of Entomology Animated.